a young man named Negishi recently jumped out of the second floor window of his uncle's house in Kyoto. This is not a metaphor. He literally jumped from the second floor window, then stumbled to a friend's place in the city, dragging his injured leg. Why did he take such a dangerous action? The story is as follows. One day, an uncle he was not particularly close with called unexpectedly. The uncle was a professor at a university in Kyoto, and had to suddenly go abroad for fieldwork. He asked if Negishi could house it while he was away, since he was worried about his research materials. Negishi, who currently lives in Tokyo, had not visited Kyoto since graduating from university there. Since he wanted to see some old friends, the free lodging was appealing, and there was a small stipend, he agreed to do it. The duration was undetermined, but potentially up to six months. Before leaving, the uncle insisted repeatedly. My unsorted research materials are scattered all over the second floor. You could say the whole second floor is my study. Those documents are more precious to me than my life. I don't want anyone else touching them, even family. Just setting foot up there is intolerable. Please, I'm serious about this. And he glared at Negishi, who says, Then, the first night, with no debris or video in the house, Negishi relaxed comfortably on the sofa, feeling content. But something disturbed that feeling. Voices whispering. He could no longer write it off as his imagination. Two or more people were having a hushed conversation. Not far away, suppressed voices. Sometimes it sounded like the din of a crowd. Like being in the hustle and bustle of a downtown area. Not just voices. A dragging sound, like feet shuffling. Or thumps, like a small child hopping around. But when he went to the stairs to investigate, nothing seemed amiss. Only then would it become dead silent, almost painfully so. Yet when he moved to another room, it would start up again. Right when he tried resting his frayed nerves, it began when bathing, when reading on the sofa, when about to sleep. One evening at dusk, Nagishi finally decided to go upstairs, buying a large flashlight that could knock out a grown man if used as a weapon. He looked up at the ceiling, then slowly climbed the stairs. Kriek, Kriek, Kriek. Peering down the pitch black hallway from the top stair, it was dark. Despite it still being light out, someone could be waving a white palm before his face and he'd never notice. The upstairs had an edu shaped hall with rooms at the end. The cluttered hallway had stacks of books reaching the ceiling on both sides. His uncle's claim of scattered materials was accurate. Chained the light side to side, nothing seemed suspicious. Dust lay thickly on the floor. No signs of people entering. But wasn't this his study? Didn't he go in and out? At the hall's dead end was a room with no door, also covered in dust. Those sounds had to come from here. Nowhere else upstairs, other than the hallway, there's no other rooms, yet no trace of people at all. So where had those incomprehensible conversations come from? Feeling provoked, his nerves were fraying badly. Suddenly, he felt like a shrill ringing sounded in his ears not something his five senses could perceive. An intensely unpleasant feeling, making his skin crawl. A tense, cold sensation clung to the back of his head, standing his hair on end one by one. What do you want? He said loudly, consciously. His heart pounded. In the silent darkness, his voice sounded like someone else's. Thong. Oh, now something really did make a sound, it felt like. Not his voice, something else. Auditory hallucination? Thumb. No, he really heard it. From the other end of the hall, near the top of the stairs. Thumb. Negishi froze where he stood. Facing away down the hall, he couldn't move. Not a metaphor. Every hair on his body stood on end. Thumb. Where are those? Footsteps. Bare feet on the wooden floorboards. Tracing the trail of disturbed dust that Negishi had left. Very slowly but steadily approaching down the hall. The old-fashioned front door locked downstairs would stump even him to open. He just confirmed no one was upstairs. That's right. Yet, the bizarre footsteps, irregular intervals, another step after a forgotten pause, 
How could anyone walk like that? What kind of being walked like that? Thump. It was about to round the hallway corner into view. If he just turned his head a bit. But Negishi didn't care about that at all. An inexplicable conviction exploded inside him. He'd rather die than see it. If I saw that thing. If I laid eyes on it. I'd be done for. Absolutely finished. I would. In the trembling motions of his hands. The flashlight beam reflecting off the bookshelf glass. Turned it into a mirror. Briefly showing what was behind him. Wettish. No, an indistinct ash grey, a drooping, crumbling shape. It flickered for an instant around the dark hallway corner. Thong! Nejishi screamed. Maybe he shrieked loudly. Control of his body returned. And he started running. Where to? The window across from the hallway to escape outside. It opened, shutter and all. Outside was growing dark. Jumping would be the only way out. But that was extremely dangerous. Were there stones below? Even concrete would be no guarantee. But Negishi had no composure to worry about danger. Climbing atop the windows, he extended his legs down, feeling around, then let go. Thought, he luckily landed on the ground, getting away with just a twisted ankle. Before tending to his leg, Negishi looked back up. The shutter soundlessly slid close. What happened next is already known. He stumbled to a friend's place and called his uncle internationally. Rather than getting angry as expected, his uncle just sighed. Surprisingly, after Negishi returned to Tokyo, the original offered compensation was sent from his uncle as promise. When he called, in his agitated state, Negishi emotionally, no, unreservedly, appealed to his uncle about the bizarre occurrences, asking what had happened and if he knew anything to please tell him. But his uncle refused to speak about any of it. No explanations, excuses, apologies, clarification. None of that left his mouth. Only when saying did he mutter, if you had just stayed on the first floor. Today Negishi continues his part-time life, pursuing his dreams, and his uncle goes on living alone as always in his Kyoto home. The one certainty is there will never again be contact between the two.